In a bid to protect endangered wildlife and combat wildlife trafficking, Nigeria is working on a new law known as the Endangered Species Conservation and Protection Bill, initially sponsored by former members of the House of Representatives, Honorable Johnson Oguma and Honorable Sam Onuigbo. Drawing from international best practices, this bill aims to bring Nigeria in compliance with key international conventions. The bill is uh, very, very important to all humans because uh, even animals they have right to life or the endangered species, you, you know, they, they are not easy to come by and we need to preserve them for future generations. And that uh, the bill is not just needed now, it has, it's a necessity, something that we ought to have had before now. But just that, now that uh, there is an international law convention which Nigeria subscribed to, we need to try and do everything possible to domesticate it so that we will not be left behind. The Endangered Species Conservation and Protection Bill passed its first reading in the House of Representatives in January 2023. NGOs including Africa Nature Investors Foundation and the Environmental Investigation Agency have helped to draft this legislation. However, the bill didn't scale through before Nigeria's 2023 elections and the previous sponsors are no longer a part of the 10th National Assembly which was inaugurated in June 2023. Therefore, a new sponsor will be necessary to move this forward. You know, the discussions have gone far. Um, however, I wouldn't want to see much um, so as not to preempt uh, the sponsor of the bill. The uh, National Assembly has the mandate to make laws and I think it should be best for them to um, take the lead. Um, however, I am aware that um, the National Assembly is quite interested in this and um, uh, it's a new sponsor is um, going to emerge very soon. This bill seeks to address organized wildlife crime, corruption, and protect Nigeria's unique biodiversity. The proposed legislation will empower law enforcement agencies with increased investigative powers, allowing them to conduct financial inquiries and intelligence-led operations. This is crucial in tracking down those responsible for wildlife crimes. A legislative analysis of the legal framework underpinning uh, Nigeria's effort to ad address wildlife trafficking, um, undertaken by the Environmental Investigation Agency UK uh, and its partner, African Nature Investors Foundation, that is ANI Foundation, um, found that the current suite of laws, um, you know, for addressing wildlife trafficking in Nigeria, um, is uh, really riddled with a lot of um, loopholes, a lot of weaknesses, and a lot of inconsistencies. Uh, which make it really difficult uh, for Nigeria to meet its obligations under the Convention. Uh, for example, um, our wildlife-specific uh, law, that is the Endangered Speci uh, Species Act, um, by which Nigeria actually um, tries to domesticate CITES, um, really falls short of what is expected. Uh, for instance, under the Convention, the CITES Convention, uh, Nigeria is supposed to criminalize all trades, all import-export, of cited listed species in violation of the convention. Uh, unfortunately, when you look at that act, you find that there is no express criminalization of import-export of cited uh, listed species. According to the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime, Nigeria has been implicated in the trafficking of around 30 metric tons of seized ivory between 2009 and 2017. Additionally, in 2019, it is reported that approximately 51 metric tons of seized pangolin scales were traced back to the country. Furthermore, the 2020 World Wildlife Crime Report indicates that from around 2011 onwards, growing volumes of rosewood were exported from West Africa, with a steep rise in 2017 when 825,000 cubic meters of rosewood logs which is equivalent to about 4 million trees, were exported from the region and predominantly Nigeria. The new bill proposes stronger penalties to combat these crimes and serve as a deterrent. Currently, the Endangered Species Act, amended in 2016, 
imposes fines of 5 million naira and imprisonment for a year for a repeat offender. Former Minister of Environment, Honorable Mohammed Hassan Abdullahi, says the increase in penalties is seriously needed. Now, we realize that um, when you take people to prison, for instance, for offenses against uh, our you know, forest um, resources, they are not too, um, they don't seem to feel that impact. But when you find them, you know, when you provide such kind of penalties in terms of monetary penalties, you know, it, they, 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 they feel the pinch. So this emphasizes more on penalties uh, that are monetary in nature that will first be used, you know, for forest conservation and then used for enforcement and also used to support afforestation projects. So I, I think that one of the best approach uh, is the penalties that this new act seems to, to provide. Moreover, the legislation seeks to expedite wildlife cases, enabling courts to efficiently handle these matters, recover assets, establish corporate liability, and foster international cooperation and extradition to ensure that criminals cannot escape justice. They are very often accompanied also by organized crimes uh, and other forms of illegal activities such as human trafficking and other things, drug trafficking. This bill uh, should bring about uh, a clearer definition of those wildlife crimes, should bring about um, sentences that um, that are sufficiently deterring uh, such forms uh, of crime. To avoid any ambiguity, definitions are clarified and clear roles for key agencies that were previously unclear are established, ensuring a streamlined and effective approach towards conservation and wildlife protection. The proposed legislation also creates new offences, such as damaging critical habitats, violating permits, introducing invasive species, obstruction and preparing to commit illegal acts. By doing so, it covers various aspects to safeguard the environment. So this law seeks to bring, you know, regulatory agencies and policymakers in one, you know, in one basket to be able to harmonize their approach towards crime prevention uh, in a forest and ensure that there's sustainable use, you know, of um, the forest. The NGOs spearheading this bill have already started fresh discussions with the Environment Committee chairs in both chambers of the National Assembly. Their primary goal is to ensure the bill's expeditious passage and its success hinges on garnering widespread support from the public and the government. Leila Johnson Salami, Arise News.